With Dr. Sleep out and about, and after covering so many supernatural and otherworldly creatures as killers, I wanted to take a step back and look at a normal human plagued with the trauma of his past, struggling with his sanity until supernatural forces themselves intervened and brought out the psychotic murderer within him. So this time, we are discussing the all work and no play, no TV and no beer, make Homer something something, an interpretation that Stephen King doesn't approve of. Did you like Kubrick's film of The Shining? No. The Big Bad Wolf, the master of knock-knock jokes, let me ask you a question, the perfect blend of crazy and insane, here's Johnny himself. This week, we are saying why Jack Torrance, the caretaker, should be a killer in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> Born as John Daniel Edward Torrance, otherwise referred to as Jack Torrance in Berlin, New Hampshire, Jack was raised by an abusive father fueled by alcohol and hate. A big debate that could arise after this point is the major differences in the essence of Jack's character that are quite different for the Stephen King book and its film adaptation by Stanley Kubrick. While the book and the miniseries depict Jack as a good man fighting off insanity, but at heart is a good man, while Kubrick changed him into a psychopathic man with insane tendencies from the start of the story, we will be discussing Kubrick's version of Jack as it would be much more appealing for the entity to want a full-fledged insane killer versus the tragic hero of the novelization. Dealing with a dry spell in his writing career and being a recovering alcoholic, Jack sought for a little cash on the side after quitting his teaching career and took up an offer to be the winter caretaker for the expansive Overlook Hotel located in the Rocky Mountains. The manager warned him that the last caretaker went insane from cabin fever and killed his family, and despite this chilling news, Mr. Torrance saw it as a getaway to give him the much-needed space and retreat from society he needed for his writing. While the head chef informs his son, Danny, of his ability of The Shining and to avoid room 237, a month goes by with Jack not having a single word written for his book. The lack of creative flow and the vast emptiness of the hotel begin to take their toll on Jack, where he displays violent outbursts and crazed body language. He passes out on his typewriter one day and dreams of murdering his wife and son. When Wendy abruptly awakens him from these gruesome images, Wendy accuses Jack of harming their son, talking about bruises on his skin. Angered at the idea of being accused of abusing his son, Jack wanders into the ballroom's bar where he jokingly says he would sell his soul for a beer. When the phantom image of the barkeep Lloyd appears, whom he complains to about his wife, revealing that he had broken his son's arm years ago by accident. Wendy explains a woman in the fabled room 237 had harmed Danny, and he goes to the room and finds the ghost of a dead woman, only to pretend that he did not see her. Returning to the ballroom for another round with Lloyd, amidst a rather enticing and extravagant room full of ghosts. The ghost of Grady begins to implement the idea of correcting Wendy and Danny all while the head chef Halloran is receiving messages from Danny Shining to return. While trying to find her husband, Wendy discovers his final declination into his internal insanity, reading the famous lines of all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Written repeatedly on his typewriter, seeing what her husband is becoming amidst the dreams of murder, potential abuse of their child, random bouts of aggression, and the literal writing on the walls, Wendy suggests and begs for them to leave the hotel. Jack takes offense to the idea and attacks her, with Wendy scoring a home run and knocking him out to drag him into the kitchen pantry. He breaks out thanks to the help of Grady and disables the two-way communication to the nearby police station to prevent any law enforcement from intercepting his actions as well as the snowmobile, considering there are record snow flurries that are pretty much isolating the hotel even further. He then spends the rest of his time wielding a fire axe to chop down any obstacle that stands in his way from that bitch Wendy and their son. With Wendy telling her son to run to the hedge maze outside to escape, Wendy fought back and cut her husband's hand with a knife. Halloran arrives on a snowmobile to attempt to save Danny, but is ultimately cut down by Jack. Akin to the ambience of Dead by Daylight, Jack is pursuing Danny by following the footsteps in the snow in this maddening maze, only for Danny to trick his insane father by creating a false trail and covering his tracks and hiding for his father to follow while he and his mother escape. Jack, realizing he failed to correct his family as the hotel's ghostly instructor wanted him to, sits in the blistering cold of the Colorado winter and slowly dies to hyperthermia. Or does he? 
With all that said, it would be easy to see the entity plucking away Jack Torrance whilst he laid in the snow, waiting for the cold grip of death. Considering how easily he could be manipulated to murder for an evil presence, whether it be to writer's block, alcohol, daddy issues, or deep-seated psychological insanity amidst the extreme isolation of the hotel and its effects on Jack. The entity could just offer him up a nice beer, and for eternity, we could see the caretaker joining the ranks of history's most infamous killers tormenting the innocent as they see fit. Now that's the story and reasoning as to why Jack should be considered as the caretaker in Dead by Daylight. But what exactly would he bring to the table in terms of his abilities? Now, of course, the weapon he would brandish to chop down the survivors would be the iconic fire axe as he wields it in the latter portion of the film. In his regard, though, his slash would be a bit slower than most killers, but this slash would also be faster at destroying pallets and generators, since he was a bit more proficient at destroying doors and other structures and sabotaging electronics. As for his abilities, the main draw of this killer would be his slow, but steady descent into madness and insanity. And so his speed and chase at first would be slow, possibly at the speed of the nurse at first. While the nurse's speed is set to 96 and most other killers' base speed is set to 115, it may be difficult to catch up to survivors at first. The caretaker could be the embodiment of the bloodlust mechanic, with a dash of the stock abilities that the shape and the ghost face have. Whenever a chase is initiated, a meter will appear, with three Three separate tiers. The longer the chase becomes, the faster the caretaker speed will become, with each tier increasing his base speed by 8%, eventually making him the fastest killer with a little work and persistent chase. However, this will only accumulate during a chase, and the second the survivor either gets away, is put into the dying state, or is blinded, the meter will start to regress immediately. There will be no delay. Also, at the max tier, his axe swing would be 10% faster as well, making him at at his utmost highest insanity much more deadlier. Now his channeling and communication with the spirits of the deceased like Grady and Lloyd could be executable. With each tier of his insanity, the more apparitions that it could appear, either being the ghost of said characters or some other entities? What's this? A wall? Or maybe once survivors have been sacrificed or killed, the ghost of each fallen survivor will appear. And to link it more to the movie slash book that he comes from, the obsession of each match will be marked with the shining, with the obsession being able to see these ghostly apparitions just as he could, maybe even causing them to scream if they get too close to these phantoms. Although each phantom would spawn relatively close to the caretaker, whispering murderous words of encouragement, maybe even even pointing him in the right direction if he loses somebody in a chase, but only for a very brief time. However, from far enough distances, the Shining recipient, the Obsession, would be able to see these ghosts speaking to the caretaker, giving them a red flag of when stuff is going down. The main appeal of having the caretaker would be discouraging survivors from looping the same area for too long. Since Jack will be so slow at first, it would be easy to stay out of his line of sight as well as stay out of his chase range. But if they attempt to, you know, troll the same pallet loop, they're going to be putting themselves at risk to make the caretaker not only more powerful, but more insane, much like most killer mains facing off against high tier survivors when they loop shit. Beyond his ability to chase with more momentum, he would have enlisted perks that would come to the fray for all killers to enjoy and work into their builds. The first perk, here's Johnny. Whenever the killer breaks a pallet, any survivor within an 8, 12, and 16 meter radius will scream and have their auras revealed to you for three seconds. The second perk, Hex All Work. Your means to correct those that have wronged you have imbued you with the means to sabotage their means of escape. Whenever the final generator is completed, for 20, 25, and 30 seconds, the exit gates cannot be activated. They cannot hit that lever. This Hex is active and can be cleansed from the start of the trial. So you do have an opportunity to get rid of this Hex from the start of the game. And the last perk, Destructive Pacifist. For each survivor that is uninjured, you break pallets and generators 3, 4, and 5% faster. For each survivor that is uninjured, you break pallets and generators 3, 4, and 5% faster. This can stack with other perks and abilities. As for skins, we could have his appearance as it was in the movie, while hopefully Jack Nicholson will allow the use of his likeness and maybe even come in to voice a few lines, evil grunts, and some lobby quips, such as saying, Here's Johnny! Or while staring at the survivors, Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. Not by the hair on your chinny-chin-chin. Chin. 
Much like the Demogorgon Stranger Things remix into its own chase music, we could possibly see a hybrid of The Shining's opening theme mixed with DBD's chase music for a more authentic and generally creepy sound and aesthetic. The Overlook Hotel would be a must as an included map due to how integral it was in Jack's insanity and what it has done to caretakers of the past. That, in its extreme sense of isolation, being probably one of the largest maps to date to incorporate must-haves such as the outdoor maze, the daunting patterned hallways, the ballroom with the illuminated bar, and as a bit of fan service, having a set spawn for one generator where when completed will open the nearby elevator door, only for a wave of blood to gush out and make a loud elevator ding sound. The outdoor maze in the snow could even introduce a different mechanic, where if outside, in the snow, the killer could see the freshly made footprints of the survivors on the white blanket. For the survivors that die or are sacrificed, there could even be a tiny little easter egg where their images would appear in the July 4th group photo in the gold room. Now a possible survivor counterpart I did consider Danny but he was too young at this point and they don't really include kids would have to be his wife Wendy Torrance who underwent the pain and torment unleashed by Jack before and during the events that occurred in the Overlook Hotel being able to fight back and survive against the lunacy that overtook her husband. Now that about covers Jack's slip into the entity's realm. Is there something I didn't cover? Should a different set of abilities and perks be considered? Should I continue this series? Who do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments, like and sub if you want more, and maybe even throw in a buck or two to either to my Patreon for a higher tier representation on this donator list here, or for some future rewards in the future, become a member to the channel for some exclusive buttons during the live streams, or on that note, donate during my live streams to get shown here as well. Anyways, check out some of my other content, I do zombie scenes and why you wouldn't survive as well. Until next time, I'm Zachass, aka Wow Such Gaming. Don't forget to stay wowie!